It's a manatee miracle. And for all of you who love those wrinkled faces and whiskers, you may be headed to Florida where they're thriving after years of dangerous decline. Their food source was nearly wiped out when the Crystal River was devastated by a massive storm 30 years ago. Our Ginger Z is in the Sunshine State with the story. Oh, there's two. Wow. It's a magical moment getting a glimpse of Florida's gentle giants, the manatee. They congregate here every winter in Crystal River, which boasts bathtub clear water just off Florida's west coast. The Crystal River is fed by more than 70 freshwater springs that I'm in right now. They stay 72 degrees year round. That's warmer than the ocean in the winter months. So they become a critical winter habitat for more than 800 manatee. On March 12th of 1993, this critical ecosystem was wiped out by a devastating storm, dubbed the storm of the century. It virtually killed all the vegetation. It's a lot of salt water that came in here and the freshwater vegetation couldn't take it. It has taken decades, fueled by community advocates and more than $40 million in funding from the state and private donations. The river has been restored to pristine conditions after removing 400 million tons of debris and other detrimental material and stabilizing the shoreline to protect the area from future monster storms. Not to mention planting a lot of manatee food. How much is a manatee eating on a daily basis? I believe the statistic is that a manatee can eat about 10% of its body weight a day. So you gotta think, if it weighs 1,200 pounds, that's 120 pounds of grass, they have quite the appetite. To satisfy that appetite, more than 450,000 clusters of eelgrass have been planted underwater by hand, creating more than 300 acres of manatee food. I got to help plant the last batch. When seagrass or eelgrass goes in, you plant it, but then it spreads? Absolutely. So the, the grass here specifically can spread seven feet in any direction in one year. They sequester nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, and they can completely transform a water body that provides benefits to uh, not only the ecosystem, but to the community through ecotourism and, and just healthier, cleaner water. While Crystal River is a shining example of a habitat restoration, manatees elsewhere are threatened by speeding boats and along Florida's east coast in the Indian River Lagoon, starvation. Excessive pollution from development, leaking septic systems, and agricultural runoff have all caused massive algal blooms, killing off the seagrass that manatees rely on. In 2021, a record-breaking 1,100 manatee deaths were recorded statewide and another 800 in 2022. While the number of manatee deaths has decreased this year, experts say they're still at high risk. Ready, one, two, three. Groups like Zoo Tampa rescuing and rehabilitating more than 300 of these lovable creatures. I got to join in and release two of them. Look at her go, look at her go. Would you consider this release a success? 100%. Their story isn't over. We will continue to watch to ensure that these animals continue to stay safe and they continue to do the things that they need to to thrive. The newly released manatees will enjoy what the team likes to call manatee munchies at the manatee snack bar, daily feedings until they're ready to survive on their own. Sea and Shoreline, the company that restored the manatee habitat here, is now turning to the Indian River Lagoon, an even more ambitious undertaking aiming to replicate the success they had at Crystal River. Once you fix it, you don't want to let it go backwards. You have to make people care by showing them what it could be and what can you do to help. And our thanks to Ginger Z. Well, I'll tell you who's somebody that is loving to help in this mission. Save the Manatee Club's executive director, Pat Rose. Pat, I was reading about your background, 45 years of experience working with manatees. You were there where Ginger was in the 1960s, actually documenting what was happening in the Crystal River. So what's your reaction to this comeback? Well, it's really, it's really important, it's great. And in fact, it's even made better because some of the people that are working hard now to protect the manatees were folks that had actually fought against those protections, but have over the years learned that the manatee is really important to their community. And so they've gotten behind it. So when you can take someone who doesn't wanna necessarily protect them and now it's their most important mission, it's a really wonderful day.
And just talk about why manatees are so special to us, to the environment. We don't just love to swim with them and watch them as we're out boating and, and see them out in the wild, but you know, they're very important to our, to our environment. Well, I like to call the manatees the gardeners of the sea, in essence. They're, they're vegetarians. They, they can weigh up to 3,500 pounds, and they do eat a lot of vegetation. But it actually, when they're able to graze and, and, and eat that vegetation the way they need to naturally, it makes them the seagrass areas more productive. So it's when man gets involved in too much pollution and the algal blooms and those things that kill off the seagrass, then that's when the, where the problems are. But Manatees are defenseless marine mammals. It really, man is their only enemy. And so it's really good when we can see these people, all the folks coming together to not only protect them, but that will protect those aquatic ecosystems. So since we are the biggest enemy here, what can we do to help protect them? Well, we can continue to allow our growth and development that occurs, whether it's in Florida or elsewhere, to do it sustainably so that we're not over polluting our waterways and leading to the algal blooms and fish kills and loss of seagrass so we can enjoy the boating habitat. So for boaters in particular, because that's the largest single cause of death for manatees, that they're hit by fast moving boats. And so boaters don't want to hit them. So they need to ab abide by those speed zones that are in place to protect manatees, look out for them. If they see a sick or injured manatee, there's a hotline to report it to, and that's 888-404-3922. Someone will come out and, and help to rescue them. And a big part of what we work with is the Manatee Rescue and Rehabilitation Partnership. Zoo Tampa, which was featured in Ginger's piece, uh, it was also is one of the members of the Manatee Rescue and Rehabilitation Partnership, which were one of those founding members also. Well, guess what? We're involved too, Pat. You're not the only one that loves manatees. I have a couple surprises here for you. Some of our producers are very passionate about their manatees. Kelly, who's a Central Florida native, she works on our show. She was kayaking with the manatees last month while visiting her family. She wanted to make sure you saw this video that she took of what it looked like for her. She saw a mating herd in Titusville and then we have Casey, another one of our pr producers. She's a very proud Save the Manatee Club oh, member. Yeah. Yes, you, you see this? She wants, yeah, to, she brutal. wants, to, yes, go ahead. Oh, it's Brutus. He's, he's yeah. one of our bigger boys in the adoption I, program. So that makes me excited to see that. <laughs> well, this is our baby. Brutus is our baby. Well, actually, Casey's yeah. baby. Yes. So, wow. But I want you to know, uh, I know he's, you know, pretty hard to miss, right? He's 1,900 right. pounds. But when we're not monitoring him, Pat, in real life, this is Casey. When she's feeling the need for a little stress relief and inspiration that we, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I had no idea this was coming. That's my That's kid's great. manatee. Yes, I brought that just for Casey. <laughs> So Casey Buford comes in and supports us and gives us support. Clearly, I need uh, some emotional support on the set, too. So Buford comes in. So see, you, your love for manatees has spread across uh, not only the country, but here at ABC as well. So we are so proud to be able to lift up your organization and talk about manatees today, Pat. Well, we're so grateful that you have, and it does take that coming together in so many, because the challenge is great, but we have successes along the way. And thank you for being a part of that and for all the exposure you've given to the manatees, because that, that's going to make a big difference. Well, and long live Brutus and, uh, and Buford. Pat Rose, thank you so much. Adopt a manatee. We're pushing that today. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. And you... You can also scan um, the QR code on your screen uh, for more of our Power of Water Project info as we celebrate Earth Month. ABC News is exploring our biggest threats to our water system right now, and that includes the lead in our drinking water, drought, and sea levels. So check out our special for more. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.